are finally gonna talk about my current watch collection. I've been putting this off for quite a bit because I've been adding and subtracting a lot of pieces lately, and I wanted to wait until I was at least momentarily satisfied. I've been collecting watches for about six years now, and during that period of time, my preferences have changed quite a bit. So this is the state of my current collection as of August, 2022. So let's get started with what I feel is the most anticipated watch on this channel, my Omega Railmaster Denim. For starters, I just wanna say how much I have learned to appreciate Omega as a brand. I have never owned a more accurate mechanical movement. This watch and every Omega they're not just COSC certified, they're master chronometers. Omega puts their timepieces through a 200 step process in order to have the name master chronometer printed on their dials. It's also super shock resistant, practically amagnetic, and it has a coaxial escapement. I could go on forever about how well built this watch is, but we'll save that for the actual Railmaster video. Let's talk about the aesthetic. The dial is so intricate. It's a vertical brushed pattern that's meant to resemble denim with a matching strap. Now I have a love hate relationship with this strap. It's super high quality, very cool, complements the dial really well, but it's kind of thick. Honestly, it's too thick. And when the watch is on the strap, I feel like it makes it look a little toyish. Regardless, I really like the watch and I consider it an entry into not just Omega watches, but to luxury watches in general. Now I wanna talk about the newest addition to my collection and the watch that has been getting the most wrist time, my Tudor Black Bay 58 in blue. I made a video about this watch two-ish months ago. So if you're a little curious about my watch journey, how I acquired the watch, slash why I chose the Black Bay 58, go watch that video. As for this video, I'm just gonna keep it pretty short. I find the Black Bay 58 to be quite attractive. It fits me very well. The size for me personally is just about perfect and it keeps great time. I am a fan of Tudor as a brand. Even though I feel like sometimes they're so focused on differentiating themselves from Rolex that they do weird things with their proportions just so it seems like they're not too much like Rolex. With all that said, for me personally, the proportion and size of the Black Bay 58 is just about perfect. And as I expose myself to more timepieces and spend more time in the watch community, I have learned to appreciate a solid three-hander. And that is exactly what this watch is, a great three-hander. So that kind of brings me to the next watch that I'd like to talk about, because I think it's a great contrast between how my watch journey started versus what it has now evolved into. So let's talk about my Hamilton khaki kit. So for starters, I can't find my khaki kit and I'm really sad about it. I started this channel back in January. And if you look at my first two videos, you will notice that they're almost entirely all voiceover and B-roll. Then there's this huge gap between videos. That's because I moved. If you watch my videos in chronological order, you will slowly see my studio come together. But anyway, long story short, I misplaced my khaki king the move. I'm really upset about this because this was my first Swiss watch. I bought that watch nearly six years ago when I started getting into mechanical watches. This was back when I had just started watching the Urban Gentry's channel. At that point in time, I really didn't know that much about watches yet. And $300 seemed like a fortune to spend on a watch. Oh, how times have changed. Between my rapidly growing watch collection and all of my camera equipment, I now have some very, very expensive hobbies. So thank you, TGV. I blame you for my addiction. With all that said, I'm happy that I still own the Khaki King because this is where it all started but it wasn't getting much wrist time before I misplaced it. Now let's talk about Casio. This is a perfect example of price not being a good indication of build quality. I'm not a brand snob. I will wear my Omega one day and then wear my little gold Casio the next because I like the watch. First of all, I'm a bit of a G-Shock girl because they're super affordable and basically indestructible. My mini G-Shock collection started with this G-Shock right here. I just wanted something I could comfortably work out in and not have to worry about banging. It was awesome. It was my go-to gym watch. Then I saw this G-Shock with the red display and I figured why not? Because they're super affordable. Soon after that, I discovered the Casio Oak. I just loved the green accents and I was pleasantly surprised that I could pull it off considering my smaller wrist size. 
I just love Casio. There's so many fun designs. This Casio will probably make it into the collection very soon. It just screams 90s to me because of its practically clear case. Which brings us to our next Casio, this fun little gold Casio. I briefly touched on this on this channel before. It's just a fun little Casio that gives me major 80s vibes. And I think I paid like $60 for it. So if I did break it, it's super easy to replace. Lastly, I wanna show you a relatively recent purchase that I haven't featured on the channel yet at all, my Casio Oceanus. Throughout the years of watching what seemed like countless videos on different brands and different watches, it seemed like the Casio Oceanus was an amazing watch for the price. The case and bracelet are both titanium, so it's super light. It has a sapphire crystal, and the tough movement is solar powered and radio controlled for nearly perfect accuracy. It's also pretty good looking and fits me fairly well. I like the watch a lot, and it's on a short list of standalone videos for the near future. So next, we're gonna be looking at my Seikos. I used to be a huge fan of Seiko. Notice how I said used to be. As many of my subscribers already know, I made a video titled The Problem with Seiko. In that video, I mentioned that at some point I would make a video about everything I loved about Seiko. Sadly, I never got around to making that video because lately I've been pretty disappointed with Seiko. Seiko used to be one of the best values for the money. We all remember the Saab 033 and the Seiko SKX. Great pieces, lots of value, but they discontinued them. I own a Saab 033 and I also own a Seiko Alpinist. I like both watches, especially my Alpinist. It's one of my oldest timepieces, but even though I'm sentimentally attached to my Alpinist, I can still see that it's flawed. I'm not gonna waste time doing a deep dive into Seiko here. I already made that video. My biggest problem with Seiko lately is they just don't keep great time. My Alpinus loses at least a minute a day, and honestly, my Saab 033 isn't that great either. Some of you have pointed out to me that maybe I accidentally magnetized my Alpinist or banged it and messed up the movement. But if that's the case, these movements are still very fragile and unreliable. At one point, I did have a watch that had the upgraded 6R35 movement, but it was still unregulated. And after a year, that watch started to drift and it was running minus 25 seconds a day. In all honesty, as soon as I got my Black Bay, I completely stopped wearing the watch. Since it wasn't getting any wrist time, I sold it. And I'm really happy that I did. I'm just not thrilled with Seiko right now, but Grand Seiko on the other hand is still definitely on my mind. And there's plenty of pieces, if I can find one that fits me right, that I would consider owning in the future. Since we're on the topic of watches I no longer own anymore, many of my seasoned subs will know that I used to own a Doxa. And as you could see, it's not here. I actually sold it to a buddy of mine. Now, I didn't sell it because I didn't want the Sub 200 anymore. I really loved that watch and vintage style divers in general. They fit me great and they're really fun and interesting. I sold the watch because I bought the wrong color. At least for me, I also felt that I should have bought it on the strap. Now, there's nothing wrong with the bracelet. It was super comfortable, it fit me really well, and yeah, the clasp was a little chintzy and I expected a bit more for that price point, but the bracelet was fine. I just realized that after I purchased the yellow Sub 200, I was in love with Aquamarine. Now that's not just because Tiffany blue is really trendy right now. Blue is actually my favorite color. And I didn't realize it until after, but the yellow really clashed with a lot of things in my wardrobe. I just wasn't wearing it as much as I thought I was going to, and my buddy was obsessed with it, so I sold it to him. I do plan on picking up another Sub 200 in the Aquamarine, but on the strap this time at some points. In all honesty, there's quite a few watches that I had before I started this channel. I have sold them, given some away, or even just flat out misplaced them. This happens when you own 20 plus watches at a time. Sometimes I even loan them out. My bronze Oris Diver 65 is actually out on loan right now. I'm a big fan of Oris. I love their watches, but after they loaned me their Cotton Candy Diver 65, my bronze Oris just wasn't getting as much wrist time. So I decided to let somebody borrow it. The Bronze Oars was my first watch video on this channel, and honestly, I don't feel like I did a very good job. So I have been super excited to have the opportunity to talk about the Cotton Candy Oars on this channel, so I can go into a bit more detail about the Diver 65 in general. 
The Oris Diver 65 is the second Oris that I own. I also have an Oris Aquas Clean Ocean Edition. This watch is my baby. I will never sell it. I will never loan it out. I will be living in a box before I give this watch up. This was my first real Swiss watch. I have to admit when I purchased it, there was a little sticker shock because I had never spent that much money on anything besides a car, but I had to have it. So I paid full retail for it and impulsively bought it online. My Aquas is nearly three years old and I have not been gentle. Just look at the bracelet, it's covered in scratches. But because it does have a ceramic bezel, it still looks fantastic on my wrist. It's crazy to me that even now I get so many compliments when I'm wearing this. I think it's the stunning sunburst style and the unique case shape. People are always like, what is that? But this watch, this watch has been my watch, like my go-to watch for three years. A lot of things have come and gone with my collection, but my Aquas will always be a cornerstone of not just my collection, but my watch journey in general. So now we're gonna talk about my Dan Henry 1970. I wanted to start off by telling you guys a little story related to the watch that happened to me a couple weeks ago. So I've mentioned this on the channel before, I wait tables for a living and I work in a very high-end luxury steakhouse and it is like wrist candy all day long. The amount of like high-end luxury watches that I've gotten to see in person working there is absolutely insane. Anyway, besides like super crazy rich people that come there, we also have normal people come in too. And a couple weeks ago, I was waiting on this couple and I was just chit-chatting with them and I happened to ask the man what watch he was wearing. He then began to tell me, oh, it's Dan Henry, it's some micro brand. And I looked at him and said, I love Dan Henry. Him and I then went on to have this really like in-depth conversation about watches. And it's just crazy to me, this man was absolutely Floor that not only was I super into watches, but I knew what Dan Henry was. And it's little interactions like that that are half the fun of collecting for me. And that is exactly why I'll wear everything from entry level luxury watches to just like fun little micro brands like Dan Henry. There's so many great timepieces out there. On to our Timex Navi Harbor. So this is just a Timex diver. I really love Timex as a brand. They got a lot of variety for a really affordable price. This is not my only Timex. I do own two vintage Timexes that I paid way too much money for and they do not work anymore, which is why they're not part of the collection. I love them, but the problem is with those little like cheaper hand wound movements is they're not meant to last forever. I could probably get them serviced, but in actuality, I just end up replacing the movement and it seems like a huge waste of money. Probably gonna turn them into some kind of decoration, but I don't really know what you do with watches that don't work anymore. If anybody has any suggestions, let me know. And finally, my Siegel 1963 Chronograph. So this was a watch I bought pretty early on in the beginning of my watch journey. I just thought it was really cool. And I think the thing I liked the most about it was the exhibition case back and the fact that the movement was so decorated for such a cheap watch. Obviously, I I know better now, but I still think it's a fun little timepiece and I do actually wear it every once in a while. Well, everyone, that is the current state of my collection. Obviously, I do have a few standalone videos planned. I'm gonna do the Railmaster Denim very soon and I'll probably do the Oceanus at some point. If there is a watch in the collection that you would like to see highlighted in a future video, just let me know in the comments down below. I'm always open to your suggestions. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.